welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. Today, we're looking at cognitive features in Code Rush. So, Mark, what have you got for us today? Uh, Rory, today I'm going to show you writing code using your voice in Visual Studio. Um, let's start with a simple example. I've got get age and days right up here. And I just want to first start with how would we write this normally, right? Well, without voice, we would come in and say, uh, well, I want to take the, the current time. So I might say date time now or UTC now, something like that. I might say, let's subtract time from that. And then I want to access, uh, this is going to give us a time span. Uh, let's put that in parens so that we can grab its total days property. And that's how I'd build it. It would take about that yeah. long using IntelliSense. I'm still not typing most of it, you know, but we can maybe get a little faster. And the way we get faster, let me get uh, the live camera here over my keyboard. See that control key right there? That's on my right side of my keyboard. I'm gonna press that down right there. Um, the right control key means I'm entering code with my voice. And I'm gonna press that down and speak. So I'm just gonna say the code I want. Date, time, UTC now, minus time, total days. And that's it. I didn't have to... Wow, that was quick. Huh? I did, yeah, it was faster. I didn't have to hurt my fingers while I wrote that code. I didn't have to correct any mistakes. I just said what I wanted. Uh, I didn't have to even... I didn't have to say the dot. Notice there's a dot there. I didn't have to say it. There are parens there. I didn't have to say it. Right? No dot. There was no parens. There was no formulation of correct case because it was voice not typing right and yet all of that comes out based on symbols in scope it's incredibly powerful let me give you another example down here here i've got the uh my topmost point uh that i want to find out of a list of points so i basically again the way i would do that for i guess if we want to go ahead and do this i go find a list of points get a sense how long this takes i would say maybe something along the lines of uh order by descending like that. And then I would do type in X, E, this, and the Lambda symbol. And you can see it's taking a long time. These are points. So I want to go grab my topmost one. So I'm looking for the Y right there. Uh, and then once I've ordered that by descending, and I've got the topmost one in there. I might come in here and say first. OK, that's how long it takes me to do that by hand. Now, there's a fair amount of symbolism in there as well, which is, I'm interested to see how you're going to get this with voice. All right. Well, here's how it goes. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to say list of points order by descending Y first. Well, that answered that question. That was pretty simple to articulate, wasn't it? <laughs> That's it, kids. That's all I'm doing. I'm saying that word, those words, list of points order by descending Y first. What I particularly like about this is that you're not having to specify any of the symbols. You're only articulating the piece of it that is distinct from something else. So you only said Y. You didn't say X goes to X dot Y, as you might expect to have to do. Sure. You just said the piece you need. List of points, order by descending, Y first. Yep. That's it. That's right. Uh, let's uh, do uh, something with this API key up here. Let's get, add an attribute to it. To add an attribute, I'm going to first uh, get the, uh, the braces there, the brackets right there. With the caret between the brackets, I'm going to hold down that control key on the right side of the keyboard. So I can say uh, debugger browsable never, like that. And there it is. Nice. And notice that I didn't have to specify the name of the enum at all. All I did was say never, and CodeRush is able to determine that debugger browsable accepts an enum type, and it knows the enums that are available for that particular, the elements of that enum, and it matched never to this particular enum element right there. The greatest part of that, you didn't need to know the specific name of the enum, right. right? You just needed to know the piece that you wanted to target. And the best version of that was found by Code Rush and put there exactly where you needed yeah. it. Let's talk a little bit about using Code Rush uh, templates along with voice. So uh, here, for example, let's create a method that calculates the distance between two points. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say M for method and D for double. I want to return a me it's a method that returns a double, and I'm here. So now what I'm going to do yep. is I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to talk. Now here, Code Rush understands that I'm about to name a method. So instead of trying to generate uh, like an expression here, it's going to give me something different. Watch this. Distance between two points. 
like that. And then I can come... Nice. So it's not gone off and tried to find APIs that have those phrases. It knows that this is the name of a method, and it's even given it to you in the right casing based on what, the way you've been doing things so far. You've got Pascal case there, not space-driven, not camel case. Yeah. It's exactly what you wanted. Yeah, it is. So now let's come in here and let's try this. Let's hold down the control key and say 0.2x minus 0.1x. And it builds the expression. Now we'll declare a local on this and hold down the control key and I'm going to say delta x. And notice again, it, 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 it gives me an identifier name, but this time the identifier name starts with a lowercase letter, whereas up here it started with an uppercase letter, right? It has a sense of where you are and what you might be expecting. I'm going to duplicate this line using, that's a code rush feature to duplicate the line and change that x to a y like that. And then finally, I'm going to return, I'm going to come in here and return. Oh, is my caps lock on? Okay. I'm going to return a value right here. And here, I'm just going to hold down the control key. And I'm going to say square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. And I get that. Wow. That is so much easier than having to type that. I'd be sat there for a little while, even trying to work out what I wanted this to, to actually articulate on the screen. But, but actually, if you just say it in the normal kind of left to right English way that you would, it's popped out exactly as you wanted it. Yeah, it works for simple expressions. Let's just say that for now. We're widening up. We're working on this even after the release, the initial release. We're uh, improving in widening its scope and its ability in, to understand uh, voice to code. Um, correctly. Um, let's come in here, let's create an enum. So I'm going to use E for enum to create an enum template. I'm going to hold down the uh, control key again. I'm going to say ice cream flavors and release it when I'm done talking. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to hold down the control key and say chocolate. Hit enter. Vanilla. Strawberry. And when I'm done with that, I'll just hit that semicolon to get out of here. Um, and now what I want to do, let's create a brand new class. So I'll use the C template and I'll hold down the control key and say ice cream factory. Look at how fast this is, right? My cognitive Pretty load good. is low. I am not stressing, rushing to try and type this. And yet I'm able to talk to you and write code pretty much at the same speed, right? Now inside of here, yeah. let's create a method that returns a Boolean here. So MB for that template is chocolate, like that. Let's come in and bring in ice cream flavors. Here I'm just going to hold on the control key and say ice cream flavors. That's an expression, but it found the type in scope right there. I'll come over here uh, and we'll grab flavors, like that. And down here we're going to return and is chocolate. We want an expression here. We're going to say flavor equals chocolate. Oh. There's basically, well, at least three levels of help going on here. The first we had already in Code Rush, the templates for sort of framing the code, coming up with the basic structure, if you like. But we were always limited at that point to having the, the user type in the, the variation, the names of the methods and the, and the detail that we couldn't possibly predict at that point because, right. you know, it's in the brain of the user. However, they can now use voice to fill that in far quicker than they could ever have typed it. Yes. And we have simple expressions after the fact for filling in the body of the code as well. Yeah, it's getting very, very cool and very, very powerful. Um, that's it for uh, this demo, uh, Roy. Uh, take a look if you hadn't seen it already. Look at the setup for, the, for this in this series, how to set up voice. Uh, and there are other cool videos in this series that show you other killer features that you can do with voice inside Visual Studio. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. See you next time.